What? You a bag, you get a whooping. As simple as that. So this game is going to get a whooping. A proper whooping. Y'all sit down a spell. Here comes the working man. Now that that's out of the way. The Duke's a hazard, man. Where do I even begin? I mean, it's a symbol of the South. It's all about moonshiners, and it's all about a car. What's not to love? And you've also got the world's most racist car in the world. Debatable. Let's just clear this up before we start the video. This is not a racist car. This is a racist car. I'll be using the Confederate flag as the background image of today's show because it goes with the theme of what I'm talking about. If you have a problem with that, shut up. The Dukes of Hazard was a TV show that ran from about 1978 to about 1984. And uh, it had a lot of hardships. It even had a, a season, a whole season, where the main cast was completely replaced. Being a successful TV show with a movie on the way. Which was filmed in the greatest damn state in all the U.S. of A. It just stands to reason that it would have a video game coming up for it. In fact, it had about three or four video games, and we're going to look at them. first two that came out were on PlayStation 1, and I happen to have fond and unfond memories of both games. And I still have them, and luckily enough, I still have a PlayStation 2 that we can play them on. So let's play them. The first game we'll look at is called Dukes of Hazard Racing for Home on the PlayStation 1. I have the greatest hits version. Published by South Peak Interactive and developed by a place called Sinister Games. Sinister Games. Okay, never heard of them. Did they make anything good? No, in fact, Batman Gotham City Racer got a 0.9 out of 10. Whoo! Now, kids, all I can tell you about this is that I liked this game when I was a youngin'. I liked both of the PS1 games when I was a youngin', but I was a kid. You gotta remember that. I was probably as old as you guys are right now. I had no standard of what was a good game and a bad game. I just thought if a game was bad, it was just something that I wasn't into. Maybe somebody else likes that kind of game. Do we have any Hunt for Red October for NES fans in the audience? No. Now let's start the game. You get treated by the intro to the actual TV show Dukes of Hazard, which I can't play the audio of or I get a copyright strike. Okay, the first thing I notice, and it drives my car nerd OCD completely crazy, what is the roof line they gave the General Lee? It looks like they took the roof line of a 73 Charger and put on a 69 Charger. Ha ha, 69, get it out of your system. And oh my god, that CGI, Bo and Luke look like aliens. Uncle Jesse looks like Sam L. Jackson with a beard. Enos, uh, well, Enos always looked weird. Main menu is where I figured out that this game does not run correctly on a PlayStation 2. The menu lags at your every button input. Watch me try in vain to put in my name. This is how slow it is to put your name in. On on the PlayStation 1, it's just pop, 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 pop. Uh, it's really easy to enter things. And I guess my name's gonna be Player Stew because I didn't know that that was part of your name entry. Also, the music in this game, oh my God, I love it. Listen. tried that 50 times, I'm not doing it again. So according to the back of the CD case, we've got some of the then surviving original cast of the Dukes of Hazard doing voiceover. We've got James Best, that's Roscoe Coltrane. We got Ben Jones, that's Cooter Davenport. We got Sonny Schroyer, that's Enos. Yes, Enos, don't make fun. Tom Wopat, that's Luke Duke. Where's John Schneider? They threw all that Warner Brothers money at this and they didn't get John Schneider? That's Bo Duke, you need Bo Duke. Maybe they didn't put him in there. Surely they got John Schneider, come on. You see, the General is one of the fastest cars this side of Daytona. And folks, that's out on the coast. Well shit, they got Waylon Jennings. They got the one and only Whaler himself. They had to have gotten John Schneider, they had to. <laughs> The general is running smoother than molasses on the 4th of July. You got that right, cousin. Cooter sure has outdone himself this time. Hey, Luke, let's see how she does against the jumping skunk, Rip. 
All right. That is not John Schneider. No, sir, Ray Bob. Could they not get him or something? Was there some kind of legal contract or something that he wasn't able to do hickey with? I don't get it. I mean, you get everybody else. You throw all that Warner Brothers money out there. Get all settled out. But you don't get the main freaking character of the whole damn show. I don't understand that. Who even is this? He doesn't even sound country. He sounds like... He sounds like a northerner trying to sound like a country person and failing miserably. Hey, he sounds like one of those people in California if they were trying to sound like a redneck as a joke. That's exactly what this guy sounds like. And I take offense. Not really. Gameplay footage and away they go. And now finally we get to sit behind the wheel of the General Lee itself. And let me tell you something. The player model looks a lot more like the real General than the cutscene version does. We got nitro, we've got oil slick, we've got all kind of extra little items that we can pick up and make the general go 109 miles an hour top speed, which is pretty damn low for a 69 charger. I know what you folks really want to know though. Can you honk the Dixie horn? Well, Yes, you can. You're going to hear me say the word floaty a lot in this review because the driving mechanics, oh my god. You turn just a little bit and the car tries to sniff its own ass. You have to ease onto that steering. Go every little bit of a tap at a time if you want to stay straight and true or not spin out or hit a wall or some shit. What is fun is pissing off Luke Duke every time you hit a wall, though. Watch it, boy. Right side up. Never saw the general do that shit in the show. Damn, bro. I'm driving him up the wall. And the terrible voice replacements does not end with John Schneider. Uncle Jesse sounds just as bad. Now just hold on, son. You be careful where you point that thing. But it's nothing, nothing. We haven't even begun to see the worst. Look what they have done to Boss Hog. Roscoe, what kind of sheriff are you? Well, your name is Mud if I don't get my money. Roscoe, there's gold in them far hills. That is not what he sounds like. The second stage is where we really get the first taste of what the rest of the game is going to be like. Basically, you're going to go through a few long winding roads, all the while Roscoe or Enos or both are trying to plow you down in their 100% invincible 78 Plymouth Furies. And as you can hear from that possum on a gum bush, they are really good at their job. They will mercilessly pile drive the crap out of you at the most inopportune time they can think of. And this, my friends, is where all that floaty steering comes into its own. Every time you get hit just a little bit or hit the side of the wall, oh, you go all over the place. Because of that, hitting ramps doesn't exactly go as planned sometimes. Dang it, indeed. You're gonna want to turn left up here. Oh yeah, that's how you figure out where to go in this game. This game isn't exactly free roam, it's 100% linear, but there are a few crossroads here and there, and you do have to turn. It's a neat little idea, I'd like to see that used more. Let's go get them, Bo. Now here's a fun one. By fun, I mean fun to make fun of. You're supposed to bash into Uncle Jesse's truck until it stops. Uh, notice they call it pulling it over. I guess we're pulling Uncle Jesse's truck over in the way that Enos just tried to pull me over earlier. Here's something that stays true to the show. Bo and Luke have a bow and arrow, and you can use that as a weapon against enemy cars. Makes a weird sound. You gotta get the mortgage payment to the bank by four o'clock or we'll lose the farm. Well, that boss hog is an ornery old lizard, and I hates him. All right, you duke, you done messed up. <laughs> you are under arrest for armed robbery. <laughs> oh, no, but I love it. Wait a minute, that is him. 
And my hat's crooked. So this is the same as the Enos stage, only with Rusk School P. Coltrane. Alright, well, go on over now, and I'm not kidding. And Roscoe Coltrane can only be described as one of the greatest policemen that ever lived. Sorry, Barn. Anyway, we finished the stage off. Boss Hog still looks terrifying. But we do finally hear Catherine Bach, who played Daisy Duke. Our mortgage payment. Right on time. My money! You know what? This horrible sound alike actually sounds like Larity from Code Monkeys. I love money. I got a blow up doll made of money that I make sweet love to every night. That's messed up. Next up, we have to evade Roscoe again. You see a pattern here? About 90% of this game is going from point A to point B with a cop car beating the shit out of you. However, this one's a little bit different. There's actually a jump over here that you have to get right or you will have to start over. I think we need a little nitro. Hold steady, Bo. But when you do it, especially on the first try, you feel extremely proud of yourself and suddenly feel the urge to buy a John Deere cap. Oh, 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 and here goes those floaty steering controls once again, all over the place. Man, you just barely tap the steering and you just go all over the place. I'm glad real vehicles aren't like that. Got a little bit of a curve coming up here. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna adjust myself just a little bit. <laughs> Speaking of crashes, here's one of my favorite crashes I've ever done in this game. Watch it, Bo. I'm running circles around you. How much do y'all want to bet one of the developer's birthdays was January 23rd, 1987? And now we recycle the racetrack from the very first stage. <sighs> I don't know about you, but I don't like the looks of this fella. To be God honest with you, I don't like the look of any of these fellas. These CGI faces give me the heebie-jeebies. Also, I failed to mention that the loading screen gets longer and longer the more you play the game for some reason. Uh, it's missing something. There we go. Here's another example of this game's phrasing. Actually, we need to quote-unquote pull him over. Somebody help! So we've got to go find Boss Hog, and then we've got to crash his Cadillac into pieces. But first, I want to show you the floaty controls playing against you. Yeep! Yeep! I will say this, I know the game so well, and I've played it so many times that I'm pretty good at it now, and this is the first I've actually lost in this whole playthrough. Whoops, uh, sorry, <laughs> almost forgot. Somebody help! Boss Hog just squealed like a pig. Shit, I need to wrap this review up. I've been on the same game for almost 15 minutes. And really, everything's the same thing. Although, every now and again, you do get to drive a different car, and they all suck. They actually drive worse than the General does. Cooter's truck is the exact opposite of the General. Instead of spinning out super easily because of the floaty controls, you can barely turn it. It's the only vehicle in the game that I've actually had to use the brake. And then there's the missions where you have to follow somebody. Oh my god, I hate those so much. You know those car following missions where you have to stay behind them at a certain distance? It's like that, but the car goes 500 miles an hour. In this one you're seeing here, it's Uncle Jesse's moonshine car, which just might be the fastest car in the game, but it's even floatier than the general. You actually feel like you're driving a 1940 flathead forward, and I don't mean that in a good way. The only other thing really worth talking about is the multiplayer mode. Yeah, like you're gonna get somebody else to play this with you. The time trial, however, is single player, and there's a lot of cars you can choose from that you never got to play in the main game. For example, here's a Mustang that actually appeared in the show one time. It's called the Double Zero. It's pretty damn fast itself. In fact, in Duke's canon, yes, Dukes of Hazard has lore, the Double Zero Mustang was the only car ever to beat the General Lee in a race. Speaking of Double Zero, there was actually an ad campaign where the Knight Rider was compared against the General Lee, but since they didn't have the rights to it, they had to put Double Zero on the side of the General. <laughs> All right, let's cook some donuts. All right, car goes round, car goes round. I don't like Sonic Underground. All right, enough of that shit. But, but what? What? <laughs> did, 
Did I just do that? Can I do it again? Can I get it in that same spot? Let's see. Uh, get up to the wall. <laughs> Shit. What a crappy game. The second Dukes of Hazard PlayStation game that came out was known as Duke Nukem Land of the Babes. I'm a bad old man, meaning lots of harm, and I don't need a car. Actually, it's called Daisy Dukes It Out. I know, terrible joke, but I'll tell you what is a good joke. When I bought this game, that's the game that was in the case. This was somebody else's joke. Daisy Dukes It Out is made by the same people that made Racing for Home. And I remember liking this one better than the other one as a kid. For one thing, it has a pseudo open world that you can explore in free roam mode. Also, you can do a burnout launch. Watch this. Yeah! This game is greatly improved from the other one. The general rides better, handles like he's on rails, and is much faster too. You don't feel entrapped in this fenced up raceway kind of feel no matter where you're at in the game. The world's your oyster. Or should I say, Hazard County is your biscuits and gravy. It's kind of interesting to see a PlayStation 1 game that's a 3D environment that you can drive around in. Grand Theft Auto 3 wasn't even out yet. Driver and Driver 2 was, but I've got a can of worms sitting aside just for the Driver series. Remind me to do it one day. Based also, the they finally it's got John Schneider. Where the hell were you? Oil on Uncle Jesse's farm? Well, if that don't beat all. Now, even with all my praising of the driving mechanics, it's not perfect. Hope I didn't rally you too much, Melanie. Not at all. This is fun. And remember when I was telling you guys about that mechanic that shows you which way to turn? Well, they thought it was a good idea too, and then some. I better go left. I better go right. I better go right. I better go right. I better keep going straight. I better go left. I better keep going straight. I better go left. I better go back. Oh, it's loading. I better go shit. Again, the music is super cool in this game. And it's the same people that did the music on Racing for Home. The band in question actually is a country group called The Tractors. Go figure, yeah. They had a big hit in the late 80s called Baby Likes to Rock It, also known as Boogie Woogie Choo Choo Train. Now, I don't know about you, but if this is what a geologist looks like, I'd hate to be a rock. Told you oh, Waylon was you. freaked out by Thanks these CGI things. things. You don't think she recognized us, do you? I reckon we ought to go down to Uncle Jesse's house and get us some French fried tater. Mm. This game has your standard cop chases, just like Racing for Home did. It doesn't get much better than this. Only they're a little bit more... What's the word? Fun? You got all this much more road to play with and there's shortcuts everywhere. And there's one little extra feature I think is super cool just because it's just like the show. The loading screens are just like the commercial breaks. If a tree falls across a road in Hazard County and there's no ramp for miles around, can the General Lee still make it? That's how the show used to cut to commercial. It would freeze frame on a cliffhanger. There's actually a wide variety of missions this time around, too. It's not just point A to point B stuff. There's fetch quests. There's times where you've got to take down other cars. Not as much as the other game, though. It's mostly the fetch quests, and there's a few things where you have to hit checkpoints. There's a couple of races, and of course, one of those stupid, stupid, stupid gotta follow behind the car and not get seen shit. I hate that. There's Boggy Swamp. More like Creepy Swamp, if you ask me. Okay, Daphne. Seriously, that sounded like a Scooby-Doo line. Okay, there's not much more to say about Daisy Dukes It Out. It's because it's actually not that bad. It's way better than Racing for Home. But they had to come up with a plot for this one to tie everything together and give you reasons to do more stuff in the game. So here's what they came up with. Boss Hog has a fucking tank hidden inside a swamp. Now the question on everybody's mind, well, my mind, does Boss Hog drive the tank? I wish I could tell you that. No, it's piloted by new character number 38. I wish Boss was piloting it. We would have had a Metal Gear situation. It would have been Big Boss Hog. Roscoe, my new invention, a mean green machine, 
shall be the weapon that surpasses Metal Gear. <laughs> oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. We're going to surpass Metal Gear, boss. We're going to surpass Metal Gear. But it does get better. It makes up for this. How does it make up for this? A one-on-one General Lee versus Tank showdown. Yes, you heard me. There is only one way to describe this beautiful event. With music. Yeah, you get the idea. Next game. Now, this one I'm not so familiar with. The PlayStation 2 game came out long after my Duke's phase had kind of wore out. And the movie had just come out too. And that's the whole reason this game exists. Now, the thick... Ubisoft. I'll be damned. Did they make the game? No, they just published it. Okay. Rat Bag. Never heard of Rat Bag. Who, what'd they make? Wow, that's a lot of dirt racing games. Saturday Night Speedway. I used to have that. I liked it. It does look like, once again, thanks to that Warner Brothers money, they was able to get John Schneider, Tom Wopat, and all the other cast in there that's still alive. And just so y'all know, y'all can go out and get the first season of the Dukes of Hazard on DVD right now. Coming soon, the second season. Got it! Before I get to this last one, I want to just quickly run through the rest of the Dukes of Hazard games left. There's only like so many, and they're super simple, so we could just get through them really quick. For example, there was a Dukes of Hazard game on the Commodore 64. Now, this isn't my video. I had to get this off YouTube, but I had to show it to you guys because of one thing and one thing alone. It goes by the classic arcade rules of don't hit anything and keep going as long as you can. And oh, yeah, watch out for those FBI helicopters that are throwing fucking missiles at you. What did the Duke boys do to deserve FBI helicopters shooting missiles at them? What horrible terrorist action did the freaking Duke boys do? You know, I joke, but there was an episode where they got caught with marijuana. Then there's a Game Boy Color port of Racing for Home. And it's just as bad as it looks. It's just, it's a, really, it's a waste of time. It's not worth, no, no, just no. Okay, I've been putting it off long enough. We have to play the PS2 Dukes game. <sighs> it's not good, y'all. Ain't the stock car race today? I bet that prize money be more than enough to pay off the mortgage. If you can win, that is. Now, who left the door open? Okay, that is an improvement. That is a way better boss hog. Still not perfect, but Sorrel Book was his own man and nobody else sounds like him. Just drop by to say there ain't no way you are gonna win that stock car race. <laughs> so your first mission in the game is the origin of the General Lee. We get to see what the General looked like before it was an orange rebel car. Now as soon, as soon as you start the game, the first problem with this game rears its ugly head. Your field of view is awful. You can barely see what's around you. Most racing games nowadays have a way to change the camera uh, or at least flip the camera around or turn it around. No, it does it automatically and not when you want it to and never in the direction you want it to. So that's the first problem with this game. The second problem is this car, every car in the entire game is slow as molasses. The music is obnoxiously loud and honestly kind of annoying. No tractors here. Never thought I'd be turning music down. There is no satisfaction in driving. There just isn't. The car feels so heavy, hard to turn, and the camera has a heart attack when you try to turn real sharp. Okay, cousin, you watch me nail the chain those bushes on the left and gun it. Watch us fly. More like watch you fall with style. I want to like this game so much because for one thing it has the open world environment like Daisy Dukes It Out does. However, you don't have any loading screens. And not only do you have the Dixie horn, you have a yeehaw button. No, you don't understand. There is a button specifically mapped 
to make you scream out yeehaw. There's no use for it. It has no mission value. It's just a thing that you can do. But every time you try to be cool in this game, something reminds you that you're not. Why did that truck have to be right in the damn way? Why? Why? I hate this freaking race. It can die in a fire. It's got that bullshit difficulty where you have to be 100% clean and precise all through the entire race or you're going to lose. The most bullshit part of it is the first place car is just as fast as you are. So you have to come up with your own little system of quirks and tricks to come up to him and get past him somehow. If you fuck up at all, just start over. Just fuck it. Start over. Which doesn't sound like that much of a big deal, but the race is eight laps. Eight fucking laps. That's NASCAR bullshit. And after you have spent all that time getting in first place, and you feel so proud of yourself, and you are making your way towards the finish line, this happens. Losing power, Luke. The general ain't gonna make it. Looks like them Duke boys are fresh out of luck. Yeah, yeah, kick me while I'm down. Now, you want to know why that happened? Well, in that first cutscene we looked at... Roscoe was taking out a little insurance policy on the race. Decaf insurance with two sugars. That's right, you are going to lose the race no matter what. You know, it's shit like this that people like me who are on four antipsychotics don't need to be burdened with because then I start grabbing for them. No, you don't know how it feels! You don't know how it feels! You don't know how it feels to be mad! This is my idea of humor! I'm having fun! Yahoo! Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's right. This game hates me. Speaking of bullshit difficulty, there's this one mission where you have to haul dynamite in the back of the general and get there before time runs out, and I made it by the skin of my teeth. Oh, great. Another follow that car mission. The game doesn't even tell you how far or how close you have to be. You just lose. We lost Enos. I told you not to hang back so far. Guess Daisy will have to go on another picnic. You told me nothing! But the mission that finally did me in, the one that made me decide I didn't want to play this game anymore, was yet another follow that car mission in Uncle Jesse's truck. Oh my god. It makes me sick just looking at the back of this truck again. This mission was so bad, it made my recording software crash and I had to use a different one. And the problem with it is the same problem that was wrong with the other mission like this. You can only be so close to him and you, can, and you have to be so far away from him. By the time you get close enough to where you can see him, you're too close. So you have to be so far away that if he goes over a hill or something or goes behind a tree, you're lost. You have no idea where he's at anymore. There is no happy medium between too far and too close. And you have to start the mission all the way back over again. And it's so long. You know what? You know, you know what? You know what? Fuck this shit. Fuck it. Ugh. I didn't expect this to be a good game. I expected it to at least be a little bit better than the PS1 games. I really didn't expect it to be so daggum aggravating and hard that I can't even finish the review. I can't finish this game. I can't bring myself to finish this game. So you know what's going to happen to this game? It's hot in here. Uh, you know what's going to happen to this game? <laughs> Give my regards to your father in hell. Well, I can honestly say good times had ball, just like they say on steamed hams. And, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Twitter, I'm Stuart K. Riley. Coffee, K-O-F-I, it's just called Stuart K. Riley. A link in the description. Link to everything in the description because that's how I roll. I don't want y'all to have to look for stuff. Now, that coffee thing now, 
What that does is that donates money to me. You don't have to donate very much. I don't even care if you don't donate but like two bucks. But when you do that, I, that money goes directly to both equipment for making these videos and games to review for you guys. The stuff that I can't find nowhere. And I would rather just get the physical copies anyway because it's just, it's just a lot easier to do, a lot easier to get an honest opinion on it. You know what I mean? So, I hope y'all enjoyed today's Working Man Games. I will see y'all again in another month and we will have something different to talk about. What is it? I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Until then, this is Stuart K. Riley. Les les bon temps roulés to you. You better make some whiskey, pack of cigarettes. Talk so much shit it's about a game, here. you'll think he's got to rest. Baby. He don't eat Doritos, he don't have no damn plan. Some people call him Riley, you can call get him that air going. Yeah. 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 yeah, get that air going. Get that air going. Shit. Turn this shit off. Don't let them pick guitars, drive them old trucks. Let them be doctors and lawyers and stuff.